this is the, the trick rule, rule 5 and rule 8. Okay, it's not exactly trick, but rather than uh, it's not much discussed, so I thought it might be useful if I discuss over here. So, what is actually this? Okay, so let's say you have the characteristic equation again. Okay, AS plus KBS. I suppose N, which is the number of poles, and then N is the number of zeros. So, if the pole is greater than the the zeros plus one, okay, then da 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 da, da equals to zero. Okay, so why is this da 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 da? This is actually some function, maybe s square plus two s plus one, right? This is n is actually two, and then n minus one is actually some just don't care. But then s is actually since this is two, two minus n minus one is actually one, right? So and then continue and um, up to KSM. Okay, M is actually the number of um, the zeros. In this case, there's only one. So it's a little complicated over here. Not not rather complicated, but uh, you need. Um, okay, hold on. Uh. Best way is to show the example. Okay, that'll be good. So this is the all transfer open loop transfer function. Okay, and then the characteristic equation is shown here. After you do the KGS over 1 plus KGS. So this is the closed loop transfer function and you're taking this portion. And this portion is actually this. Right? So what he say over here is that this should follow this one. So this is cube, which is n. And then this is m minus n, which is square, right? And then this is n minus n minus n. And, you know, follow the trend. And then plus some values, okay? <coughs> then maybe ta -ta 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 -ta, if you have more values, in this case we have only 24. Right? And then plus KSM. KSM is actually the, the number of zeros. In this case, as you can see, it is only 1. So this is why KS1 plus K. Ta -ta -ta. And you have some other stuff. Okay, so this is, this is a general formula. Okay, this is why it is written. You have to sub in your own thing in order to understand what the formula is and then um so what is this exactly talking about we, we do about all these things so the, the what we're talking about is actually that the theory of equation gives that the summation roots of all this characteristic equation is equals to the second value in this in this chunk of equation so in this word in other words all these roots Okay, all these roots that you find. Okay, if you sum it up together, you should be able to get this value over here, the second value. Okay, so this is what it means. Okay, so if you were to sum, so likewise this one also. If you were to sum that up, you should get this value. If you were to sum that up, you'll get this value. Okay, so let's prove this hypothesis. Okay, it's pretty easy. So um you take 1.74, okay hold on a while. If you sum them out, okay, this is minus 1.74, okay, minus 3.62, and then minus 3.62, you get 8.98, which is approximately about 9, right? And then as you as you say, if you sum it out and then you there's a minus sign over here, right? Do you see any minus sign over here? It's a plus. So therefore, as you can see, you need to add in the minus sign over here. So therefore um, since this is minus 8.9, minus, minus, minus 8.9, you have 9, plus 9. So, about, approximately plus 9, lah, okay? So, you have this value over here. And then, as you can, you may doubt. So, this one actually, if you add them together, they will cancel out each other, lah. So, you know, you have this value over here, that's all. This is when k is equals to 1, we are subject into this equation. Okay, this is the characteristic equation. If it's k is equals to 10, you can see if you are to do this again, okay, the roots itself should also be, be the same. Then minus 3.84, minus 3 by 3 by 4 again. See, minus 8.9921, and then following the thing, minus, 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 minus the, I, I you remember, so this is minus, Minus whatever value you have because your your roots are always negative, ma. So this is why they want it. They want to change to positive. So it's minus 
minus and then in this in our case is 8.99 so therefore we will have 9 plus 9 so it just reflects on this side I mean this side no. <laughs> and then same as k equals to 100 if you were to approximately you, see, you can see this is 4 this is 4 okay this is minus 1 minus 4 minus 4 approximately minus 9 and then the rule states that you have to end the negative also so you will become plus 9 over here the same thing same as 1000 if I, if I sub in 1000 over here you can still also get this one so this is actually the rule 5 that what it means and then also that is independent of k you can see that as k increases k equals to 1, k equals to 10 whatsoever the, the, there is no changes in this in this portion over here right so it's the same thing as the the AS not same thing but rather than similar things if you the AS will never change only the K changes if you remember our rule 3 explanation I think I forget but yeah if you remember so these are all the the, the key notes you need to take, take um, in consumption and then um, can be used say this can be used to prove the asserted rule okay, um, I don't know how to prove that okay this is them check apparently this should be some values that could help us draw the asymptotes in the certain because asymptote is always just some some standard values right I don't know how to draw but yeah anyway I just stop here first not stop here but rather I yeah I just want you to know that this is the general understanding of it okay when when your number of poles is much is, is larger than zero is a, is larger than the number of zeros plus one that's all this, this you you exhibit this 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 phenomenon so let's go to root eight okay I mean root eight root eight states that if you have a zero maybe I should go back to this the open loop zero to the left of the top okay the open mm, hold on okay it is sim I just don't want to complicate things I just straight jump to the point okay so it is just saying that let's say if your values of zeros okay at the numerator is is larger than the 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 poles okay this you can see it's nine this is two and five if let's say it is s plus one then this are s plus two typically the question will always give you this type of question right so what if uh, you you have a, a value that is larger than than the two two poles what are you gonna do right so as you can see if you were to do that your root locus will actually have a Circular, okay, as described over here. Part of the root locus is circle center the zero. You can see the the row, the circle is centering around the zeros. So this is what it means. And as you can see, how if you want to visualize, okay, so one one pole over here will move as k increases, will move, and then one and then it goes to the zero. Another pole will move, and then it goes to the infinity. So this is what it means, okay? So this is a type of trick question you need to really be careful of. Is that if you have some value of um, s plus nine, um, in this case, and then um, if you have some values of the numerator larger than the new the denominator, then um, you should expect this type of curve to this type of locus to come out. So you should know how to draw. And then I haven't tried okay because I just realized. What if you have s plus 9 and then this is s plus 10, s plus 1, right? So one one pole is smaller than one pole is smaller than the zero, and another pole is larger than zero. So I should go and check it out for one more. Okay, so when I sub in 9, okay, so we are, if I have this equation, the the result will be that there will be no circles, okay, it goes to a straight line. Okay. We uh, take an opportunity since we have a little time. When you're plotting root locus in MATLAB, the first thing you need to plot is actually uh, the numerator. So in this case, as you can see, it's s plus nine. So s is the coefficient is one, and then nine is the plus nine. And then in the denominator, if let's say you have s plus nine, s plus one, you have to do the quadratic. You have to expand it out in terms of this, and then you sub in the coefficient. This is one, and then eleven and ten. 
and then after that you 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 type any transfer function equals to ts this is this means transfer function this is the name of the transfer function and then um you have to use this bracket num and denominator you make sure you put this semicolon also over here and then um you should get this result showing you when you write type hs equals when you type hs equals to this one they will show you this this portion over here if you type the semicolon you will not show anything so let's say I, if i if i type uh, dim equals to one you see they, they say dim equals to one so if i didn't type if i type in the semicolon right you have nothing you can continue to type so this is what it means I mean, uh, yeah, and then after you type root locus of the name of the transfer function, you should get the root locus back. Okay, so um, maybe let's test out the, the another thing. So maybe we should clear the the code, and then we redo it again. Maybe we in, in this case we we do a uh, different values. Maybe we do um, come on about. Mm, let's try this one. Okay, we're trying to prove prove the hypothesis of rule eight, right? Saying that if the if the zeros is larger than the poles, then then what would it be, right? So um, let's type in um the numerator one five the coefficient. Hey, shit, <laughs> Hold on, uh. um one five, and then yeah. The denominator equals to um, the coefficient of the s square plus. So it's one, three, and two, and then uh, g of s equals to tf um, num dim. Okay, you can you can go, but I I just don't want to show you. So I still able to look at this Okay, so <coughs> oh sorry. Look focus and then bracket G of S. We should generate the thing in in in, in no time. So um you hold on a while. Yeah, so this is the root locus. Is it? I don't think so. <laughs> hold on a while. Okay, yeah. So you can see you are going circular you are circulating around again, okay? So you may also ask what if you have un like other zeros? So hold on a while. Let's try s plus two, s plus five, and s plus one, s plus one. We 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 have the same thing also. So hold on. so if if let's say you have s plus two, you have this scenario, you have this this outcome. Okay, you can see that um there will be two zeros, and then because s plus one, s plus one, so the two poles are at this portion over here. You still have the circles circulating around the poles itself. So what if um if it's equal, okay. What if it's s plus two, s plus two? What do we have? Okay, so let's try. Sorry, this s plus two, s plus two. The to if you cancel, it's actually one. There's no root locus. <laughs> you can see, damn. Okay, so why not we try s plus two, s plus five, and then s plus one, s plus two. So this portion over here and this portion over here are the same. So end up, we should be able to see that. Um, I don't know. So. What if, what if this case? Okay, what do we have? Okay, hold on. So as you can see, there will be no no zeros also. Okay, so yeah, I mean no, there is no circle. Okay, so maybe I should add in one more. See how how will it go? Maybe I should add in uh, like a S plus, maybe two. In this case, what would it have? Okay, uh huh. Then you have a root locus with this pattern again. Okay, so if you have, you know, more more poles than zeros, and then such that the the number of you know um zeros, the value is larger than the all the poles, you will still get back this thing. So I I've done so many examples just to only show you the reason behind um all these things. It's just that if if the value if a okay if a is larger than b and c, okay. The the part of the root locus is a circle, okay, centered around the 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 zeros itself, seeing that manner, and then the shape of the root locus is independent of the position of the imaginary axis. I have no idea what it is. So I believe is so far you have seen so many graphs. Do you see any root locus 
circle touches the imaginary axis. Okay, so far I don't think so. And then therefore I, I, I believe this is the meaning of that. Uh. Okay, the shape of the rule occurs is independent of the position of the imaginary axis. So you you always never touch the imaginary axis. This is what I think. Okay. So uh, if you if you if you doubt me you can actually go back to all just a few minutes ago. I have so many examples. Let's see whether do they touch if they touch then my hypothesis fail. Okay, but nonetheless, yeah, this is the case. So I'll see you in the next video to it will be a summary of what is actually in Lucas. And then we'll do an example. So the next the next video is a summary to use all the rules and then explain how to use and such like that. So I'll see you there. Bye bye.